Good afternoon, Recon here with TechOut, and I've used iOS 18 Beta 1 for 24 hours now, and I want to go over some of the cool new features, um, some of the things that Apple did talk about, and some of the things that Apple did not talk about um, that I found just overall in my usage. Um, there are actually some pretty cool things that I wish we've had before. Um, and first and foremost, I want to get started off by saying I've been using my phone uh, unplugged here um, for about 11 hours now with on and off usage, just uh, my day-to-day -day stuff at work and the battery is currently holding at 68%. Um, so battery life on Beta 1 is actually pretty respectable. I haven't had any issues um, with that thus far. Um, so we'll hopefully we'll keep that up here on Beta 1, or in the following betas rather, um, and uh, that stays stable. I wanna go over some of the stuff that we do have here um, in iOS 18 Beta 1 that Apple really didn't talk about. Um, and the first thing we're gonna start off with is the battery settings. Um, so this page is a little bit different here. As you can see, battery health, that is the same, but the charging area has been renamed. It used to say charging optimization and then have your optimization status over here. Um, if we tap into this, you can see we do have a slider here instead of uh, the three choices that we had before. Um, so now you can set your charging limit between 80 and 100% in increments of 10, uh, in increments of 5% rather, instead of just setting it at 80%. Um, so if you want to set it at 95, you don't want to charge it to 100% every day, uh, but you need that you know full charge at most. You can do 90 or 95% and still get by just fine. So that's a little you know cool feature that they added um, where you can customize that. Everything else in battery health here is the same. Um, battery health is normal, 99% maximum capacity, 169 cycles. All this shows the same as it did before. If we hop down here to the action button, um, we have a new option and Apple did talk about this when they were talking about uh, the control center, I believe. Um, and that's the fact there is a new control section. Uh, so you can choose one of your control centers, uh, controls or at least most of them here and tie it to um, the action button. You can't choose all of them. Um, like I don't think they have the shortcuts thing on here, but that's because they do have you know, the shortcut option as the next one, um, which has been there uh, since I was 17, obviously. Uh, but you can do most of this other stuff, like uh, turn on airplane mode, turn on or off cellular data, uh, personal hotspot, uh, all that kind of stuff you can do. You can turn on and off dark mode. You can open the home app. Uh, you can pull up your remote. So if you're somebody that frequently uses your phone as your Apple TV remote, you can use this to open that up, which is actually pretty nifty because you're just you know sitting there on the couch, hit the button, you're good to go. Um, or you can tie it to your wallet, which again, nice feature because go to the store, you wanna use Apple Pay, boop, hit the button, your wallet pops up, or tap to cash. Um, if you wanna use the wireless um, Apple Pay cash, uh, you can do that as well with the button. So pretty neat features. Um, in there on the control section. I have mine tied to um, the good old silent mode just to turn that on or off because I've been turning that on or off frequently. Um, one other thing they did change is here in focus. Um, you used to have to choose a focus mode for it to turn on and off. Uh, now you can choose all focus modes, which when you hit the button will bring down your drop down. Uh, so you can choose whichever one you want instead of having, to, uh, having it tied to a dedicated focus mode. Uh, very, very cool there. Uh, while we're here, I'll actually switch it over to the flashlight and show you what's new on the flashlight. I don't know if this is an iPhone 15 Pro uh, feature only. I haven't heard on what this works on, um, but I know the Pro and Pro Max, it'll do it. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know if it works on the 14 Pro. Uh, you do have to have the dynamic island, I, I do know that. Um, so when it comes down from the dynamic island here, um, you can of course adjust your brightness, which you've been able to do before, and you can do that on pretty much all the devices. Uh, but you can see here we have this other bar on the top, and if we slide left and right, you can see you can actually make the beam wider or narrower, and you can actually see on the uh, desk there, it actually changing. So it actually works pretty well. Um, and then you can just turn it back off and you get this pretty cool animation and then it goes away. So very, very cool there. Again, I don't know if this works on the 14 or if this is something limited to the 15 Pros only. Uh, I do know, again, that you have to have the dynamic island because that's where it uh, expands out from. But pretty cool feature with the flashlight there. Um, they did rearrange the settings section. I already went over that in my uh, other video, so I won't do uh, uh, bore you with that too much, but they did rearrange settings. Uh, so most of your common stuff is up top here. Uh, they moved the camera up a little bit, so you don't have to scroll all the way to the bottom for the camera. Uh, notifications and sound and stuff like that has moved down a little bit. I think that used to be like the second one. Um, the best feature though of settings is they move the apps. Um, so now all your apps here are on their own section and you can search them independently of everything else. Um, which is very nice. 
uh, because they used to just take up the whole like first page and you have to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll uh, to get to the bottom. Uh, so they did move that. Uh, settings search has been uh, changed a little bit. It looks very, very nice. You've got your suggestions up here and then everything is nicely labeled right there in your search. Uh, bug wise, we haven't really had, I haven't had any issues really. Um, I mean, there's your first beta stuff like the the main thing I have is a little bit of keyboard lag if I'm typing really fast. Uh, that seems to be a little bit application dependent, uh, but I've never had to force close an app or restart anything. I haven't had any um, crashes, no app crashes, no phone crashes, nothing like that. Um, so that is pretty good. Um, one thing I did have an issue with, which I already again went over, is a bug with the uh, customization of the lock screen controls down here. Um, you can see they took a second to come up there. That's not what the issue was, but um, when I go to, uh, I'm not gonna do it now, but when I, if I went to add one and I went to uh, set it to open an app, the thing pops up to choose what app you want it to open and then it goes away. Uh, but you can fix that by adding it and then it'll pop up right here on the main page. Uh, so there is a workaround for that. Uh, Apple already did say that that was an issue uh, that is a known issue, so they're already working on that. Um, another cool feature that I don't really haven't really talked about too too much is the fact that you can lock apps. Um, so if you want to require Face ID, you can do that. Um, you can hide some apps. Not all apps can be hidden. Uh, I found that if it's a system app, uh, like something like Home, where it's going to be in another part of the phone, uh, or like your web browser, you can't um, you can't hide it um, or require. Uh, you can require Face ID, but you can't hide it. Uh, entirely so the icon is going to have to be there. Um, of course you can put it over in your uh, app library but it's not going to be in the hidden category. Uh, even Chrome is like that but I assume that is because I have Chrome set as my default browser so it is like a system app basically at this point. Um, another cool thing is you can uh, rearrange widgets um, so you can actually change the size of widgets right there very easily. Um, and I'm actually going to just shake to undo. A little hidden feature there that actually works on your home screen. Not new to iOS 18, but it is something that is uh, has been there and it is kind of handy, especially with the new iOS 18 features of being able to put your applications wherever you want. If you're rearranging something and you mess it up, just shake it, you can undo it and fix stuff back the way you had it. Uh, so that's very, very cool. Um, control Center, we'll go over this since this is a main feature. Uh, control Center, one cool thing I did is you can actually add app shortcuts here. So I have a battery bank, my Anchor battery bank has an app, and I don't really want uh, to have the icon taking up space on the home screen, but when I want to check my battery, I can just pop it open here right from the um, right from Control Center, which is very nice. Uh, same thing with Pass Keys, didn't really need that app on the uh, home screen because it's an app that I actually usually use when I'm in another app. Um, so now I can just pop it open right there from Control Center. And of course it will be locked and has to unlock. Uh, another one is Feedback Assistant for those of you on the beta. Very handy if you run into an issue, tap that button right there. It'll go right into Feedback Assistant and start a new feedback screen so you can go ahead and report whatever issue you may be having. Um, I did change the now playing thing to make it small. I don't really use the now playing thing that much, but I do use the uh, little audio selector here if I wanna change my audio output device from my AirPods to the phone speaker, uh, something like that. So I did uh, put that down there and just make it a little bit smaller. I got rid of uh, this right here. This used to have its own page and it looked identical to this. Um, so I just got rid of that. So I just have my home stuff and my favorites up here, which is basically just the main page um, where I put everything. Uh, because I can just easily expand that. There's no reason to have to swipe down to find it when I can just expand it on the first page. Uh, one other cool kind of hidden feature that you can't really use unless you need to is the satellite option for sending SMS messages. Um, and you can try to connect to the satellite here and it will turn off cellular uh, and try to connect to the satellite and give you a demo on what connecting to a satellite is like. Uh, it will work inside, uh, at least where I am, but it does take a little bit of time. Um, so we're just going to cancel that. But you can send uh, iMessages and regular SMS messages on certain carriers. Uh, Apple hasn't said what those certain carriers are, but it is limited to uh, uh, select carriers right now at least. And that's for SMS only. The iMessage will work for all of them. Um, but I think T-Mobile supports it because I know it's working in Android 15 on their beta. So um, I'll have to try it uh, this weekend if I lose cell service when I go on a trip. Um, we'll try it out. But the conversation also has to be a recent conversation. So it looks like you don't have the ability to start a brand new conversation over satellite. Um, and this isn't something that you can turn on 
uh, just you know at free will you do have to actually have no cell service no Wi-Fi um, and then it will automatically enable and I think you can enable and disable it from there uh, but if you have cell coverage or Wi-Fi you can't actually just turn it on and use it whenever you want um, so you are limited to um, to those uh, times uh, same thing with emergency SOS it only enables when you don't have coverage uh, so those are some of the things there uh, clock timers now appear in um, the notification or the uh, dynamic island again uh, which was taken out for some reason in uh, older versions of course you can just swipe to get rid of it if you get rid of something you can actually swipe the other way and bring it back um, I think I canceled the timer yeah okay, I canceled the timer so we're just gonna cancel that one fully and then it'll go away so very very nice there uh, another hidden feature not really a feature but just another hidden little quirk is when you hit a button um, this only works on the newer devices. I tried this on the SE2 and it didn't work, but if, I don't know if you can see there, it kind of indents the wallpaper or the screen a little bit on the side when you hit the button. Also works for the uh, home button. You can see there when I hold it, and it does it for the duration of the button press, so it actually looks like the button is pressing into the screen, which is pretty cool. And it will work if you push multiple buttons, all that kind of stuff, uh, all those combinations. Uh, we've got the icons here. Um, which are pretty cool. Uh, we should get icon theming for third-party icons once uh, obviously the developers update this, which will come later um, when this is released because they can't release the iOS 18 specific updates until it's out to the public. Um, but you can theme the system icons. Uh, you can also do the tinted icons right here, which will work for everything because it's just adding a color tint over them. I'm not really a big fan of that because they just makes them all look the same. Um, so I like to leave mine on dark. And then you can also darken the background when you have it on dark. Um, I think that's just the cleanest look um, when you're running dark mode and all that kind of stuff. I really like how these look down here in dark mode with just the phone green and everything else black and the bubble green and everything else black. So I can't wait till uh, third party developers are doing that to their apps as well. I think that will make the home screen look really, really good. Because um, one thing I hate about Android is when you download an icon pack and not all your icons theme, it just doesn't look right. So very, uh, very excited to uh, see all those roll out because um, I'm assuming hopefully Apple, at least in my previous experience, will make app developers upload a version of each app, so a light and a dark, um, so they all work uh, well. So hopefully most developers will do that pretty quickly and then we can see all that kind of stuff. But those are some of the major features here on iOS 18 beta 1. Obviously some of this stuff is subject to change, but these look like some of the main features that are going to stick around. Um, we might see different implementations of it uh, and, and future betas and stuff like that may change before the public release. Uh, but very, very happy with iOS 18 uh, and the performance right now in beta one. Uh, really like using it and it seems to do pretty well. So hopefully they keep that up with stability and stuff like that. It's very stable for all the new changes and stuff that they have added. Um, so like I said, if I run into any issues, I will uh, make more videos on this. And of course, when beta two comes out, we'll go over the features and changes as well. I'm Kamala Tech Out. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you want to see anything in iOS 18, let me know in the comments section down below, and I can uh, hopefully get you a video out on that. Have a great day.